Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, lads. Mark Breland, former trainer of former heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder. Following on from the interview he gave, remember the actual name of the crowd he gave it with, but following on from that interview he gave over the weekend where he refuted the allegations that were made against him. They are allegations, okay? The allegations have as many holes in them as Swiss cheese. But the allegations that were thrown at him by Team Wilder, um, you know, that he was a double agent, that, you know, he was in cahoots with Fury, that a lot of silly spiked water, a lot of very, very silly, silly accusations. He's gone onto Instagram and he's given a quite a lengthy statement, it has to be said. He split up into two parts. One was on training Deontay and the other was on the allegations made towards him by Wilder's team, or his current team, I should say. So... I'm going to give a brief synopsis on this. I'm just going to read a verbatim what Mark Breland has said. Okay, so I'm going to start the quote with this. I'm going to quote Mark Breland here. After Deontay became a name in boxing, new members joined the team, and it got to a point where I didn't even have my fighter's phone number. I haven't spoke to Deontay alone in years. The things that I told Deontay had to be ran past Jay. He's referring to Jay Deese, the head trainer, the official head trainer of Deontay Wilder, and I think part of his management team. He goes on to say, Deontay had become untrainable because he was at a point, uh, he was at the point of he knows more about boxing than all of us. So teaching a correct jab was not a priority to learn once he continued on his knockout streak. So a coach can only teach someone if they're willing to learn. We would wait for the champ hours before he arrived at the gym and Jay would inform us of his mood. If he'd had a bad day, we had to be quiet to not be on the receiving end of his rat according to Jay, in an effort to not be fired. Wow. So, before I carry on further, I'll give my quick two cents on that. So, basically, every, Mark Breedland is essentially claiming here that everything that he wanted to teach Deontay or whatever he wanted to speak to Walter, they had to run it past JD's first. And what I find quite interesting is this, once he became big name, new members joined the team. That is so indicative of not just boxing, it's just people in general. Like, I mean, like, if you think of it like this, right, how many people, and how many people have gone downhill when that's happened to them? How someone who maybe hadn't been a big name at one point, I'm not talking about boxing, I mean just in general, how many people do you, like, do you hear stories about, oh, they were kind of a nobody, a bit of a nobody, then they got a bit big, they started letting all these people in, and then things just went downhill. You know, it's amazing when, you know, you're on the way up. I'm not just having a, I'm not having a go at Wilder here, this is just in general, this is just a a generic kind of thing it's amazing when you're on the way up how many people will kind of like look at you and just kind of throw you to one side but when you're kind of there it's like oh everyone wants to know you it's just it's so crazy to me and it's crazy to me how people can be in that position and not see the big picture like again not necessarily talk about wilder i mean in general like how many stories do you hear of people who are like well i thought they were good people even though you know they called me a you know what back in the day you know i thought they were good people it's like jesus um I'll carry on. I'll carry on with this now. He goes on, Mark Breland, to discuss what was said with regards to the accusations um, that were placed against him. And he says here, to start quote, I never thought anything this insane could take place. I should not have to address who had the water because that accusation is so asinine, it doesn't deserve a reply. Anyone who knows a tiny bit about boxing knows we were tested before and after a fight. So that's the end of that ludicrous allegation. Lastly, at that fight, just as many others, we had no cut man because Deontay won't need it. So I'm not a doctor, but I know blood coming out of an ear and dazzled eyes could mean brain issue. Of course. And power comes from your legs and his legs were gone. So I made a decision to stop the fight and I'll do it again. End of quote. That is what Mark Breland had to say. Um, the spiked water situation is just so outlandish, so ridiculous. Again, as he said there, you are tested before and after a fight. All right? So if your water was spiked with something, it would show up. Mark Breland, I think a subscriber of mine said 15 years, I forget who it was, but someone actually commented and said they think they, they believe anyway, or they said that he was in Wilder's camp for something like 15 years. I mean, like, seriously, was this a, was this part of the whole big plan that they knew exactly, you know, February 2020, 
he'd be fighting Fury. Now our master plan comes to fruition, you know. We, we banked on him going to the Olympics, winning the bronze medal, beating Stavern in 2015. Now, it's a, now we're showing our true colours, really, really. Wilder has given an interview. I might do a separate video on this and upload it in the morning, but that's even more a worry, some of the things Wilder was saying, because Jesus Christ, it really does show that he has learned sweet, precious little. Um, Mark Breland always came across as kind of a quiet, reserved guy. Um, you know, you can tell that these accusations are bothering him, are bothering him, I should say, for want of a better word. They're bothering him. Um, I think it's the fact. I don't look. I think it's the fact they're so outlandish, and like I said, you can, they're like Swiss cheese. The holes in them that there are people who are genuinely taking them serious. That it's obviously getting to him. As that saying, he wants to probably just get on with his career. He wants to get on with basically what he's doing in terms of you know maybe start continue his career as a trainer. And I think having all this going over him is just it's not a help to him. In terms of what he was saying about throwing the towel in, look, as I said at the start of this video, he said that there were people in Deontay's team who just joined when he got big. Well, believe it. Jay Diaz seems to know absolutely zilch about boxing. All right, He seems to be just a yes man to end all yes man. Having yes men in your team is just such a bad idea <laughs> because how are you going to learn if everyone's telling you yes you know um although saying that like at the end of the day like having yes men in your team is bad you need people who are straight and down to the point that's what you need but you need to be careful about some people like that as well because sometimes i mean this right you can genuinely have people who they are straight they are to the point but some of them people again they may not have your best interest at heart and what i mean by that is they may be actually trying to you know shut you down because believe me i've seen that before i've seen some absolute degenerates in my life who they're not yes men but they've literally shut people down and just told them not necessarily home truths some of them were home truths but really just went in on them because why they just didn't like that person so you always want to be you always want to make sure your circle is people you can trust you know you don't want the yes men but you don't want people who are just low life degenerates either at the end of the day even if they're not yes men they can still be degenerates um you always going to be want to be careful for that in terms of wilder like i don't know I'll, I'll probably touch on him in a separate video the stoppage i've said it once i'll say it again mark breland he's he's been there accomplished amateur world champion welterweight he knows when the fighters had enough he's been in that position he knew what to do to throw in the towel and at the end of the day i said it then i'll say it now Credit to Mark Breland for doing that. That was what needed to be done in that situation. All right. If the, the ironic thing is right, and I'm I'm glad this didn't happen. By the way, imagine Wilder had. Imagine he wasn't there, and it was just Day JDs, and Wilder had stayed in until the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh round, and then maybe he got stopped and taken out by Fury, and he suffered damage. Now, would there be people saying, "Well, that tail should have went in five, six rounds earlier"? Hmm. You got to ask that question, and. I'm glad we didn't get to that because I don't want to see any fighter gets taken out of the ring. I don't want I don't want that question to be asked about any fighter. Why didn't they stop it earlier? Because it could have prevented him from being seriously hurt. If we're having to ask that question, that's not good, right? So in my opinion, Mark Breland, spot on, stopping it when he did. He knew what he was looking for. In terms of the allegations, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. In terms of Wilder's team, I mean, what can you say? He gave an interview. Wilder did, and he said some silly things. Now I'm going to touch on them now in a separate video. But I'm going to blow this tonight. Upload that one tomorrow. So enjoy, enjoy. Hope you like the people. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe, of course, if you're new. Hope you enjoyed. Hashtag Gmatrox. All that good stuff, lads. I'll talk to you. Peace.